Hey everyone, welcome to Free League Showcase. This is our fourth fourth session of the day. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're, we're really excited to bring all, all sorts of Free League content throughout this weekend. Uh, joining me right now is Nils, the one of the designers and writers behind a whole bunch of RPGs for Free League Publishing. Uh, we've got, you've got Vason, Tales yep. from the Loop, Things from the Flood, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of games. You've also written for, for Forbidden Lands a little bit, and you're going to work on some of the other upcoming uh, games. But let's chat a little bit. We want to introduce yourself and tell folks a little bit about who you are and what you do there at Freely Publishing. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you do that. Um, I, I, I live in the southern parts of Sweden, and I'm, uh, I've been a writer for Free League for quite some time, a couple of years. And I, of course, play a lot of role-playing games I have done for many, many years. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm both a fan of, of, of the Free League and, and the writer for them. Um, I like, I, I just told Doug, I like more uh, story games. It's my niche more than the crunchy games, kind of, I'd say. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do like... Uh... I think that's one of the the strengths of freely games is that they've got this great combination of story and mechanics like that. There's just a little bit, there's crunch there, but it's not like really heavily. And it's, it's more, everything's more story driven. And, and uh, I just said this on the, the, uh, the interview with, with Drew. Uh, I love how free league is able to tweak that year zero engine mm. just a little bit, add a mechanic or change a mechanic here or there. And, it makes it feel totally different. Yeah, like, yeah. like the, like the conditions like for, for Vason and, and, uh, and everything that, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. excited to. Yeah. If you, if you compare like Tales from the Loop with Forbidden Lands, they're not that similar. They're not. Uh, no. So yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, they, they, they put a lot of different things in the same system. Yeah. I will tell folks that if you're watching us and you, and you have any questions, uh, feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll address them as they pop up. Uh, we will uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can. We've got 30 minutes, so I, I we'll try to uh, fit them in as, as we go along. Uh, let's see here. Ibram says, Vason is one is in my top three games right now. That's great to hear. <laughs> That's a great. This game just came out this year. It's a beautiful, beautiful game, by the way. I mean, yeah, it's just a, a phenomenal. Like this is probably one of the. I mean, it's hard to say that it's one of the best uh, books that uh, Free League has put out, but it just feels really good. Like I yeah. love how it looks and feels. Like I don't know. It just. Yeah, yeah. I think many many good things came together for this game. I mean, of course, the illustrations was never a question. Uh, the, I mean, the, those those are great, but I think the 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 layout is really good for the game as well. Mm, it is. Um, so I agree. This this is a really great, really great product. I think. So, for folks that aren't aware of Vason, do you want to tell folks a little bit about what uh, what Vason is as far as a role playing game? Uh, Vason is a game of of uh, of horror and, and mysteries, but I would say it's not it's not uh, horror movies darkness. It's more, more it's more like uh, if you think about uh, old uh, fairy tales. Uh, about trolls, about elves, about mystical creatures living among villagers um, in in the woods. Uh, all those stories about you know the Little Mermaid, uh, not the Disney version, but but like the the, the real one, the, the original, where the world is kind of cruel um, and and bad things happen. Uh, but there is there is a magic uh, in this. So uh, you play. You play investigators in uh, in the 19th century, uh, and you leave your home in the city to go out in the in the woods and the countryside uh, and try to help people uh, where their uh, strange things has happened. Because in this world, vase and magical creatures live among people, uh, and you are, you and your comrades are. are one of the few who can actually see them. They are invis invisible to all others. So you go out there and try to make things better 
sometimes it's the Vaisen who are like attacking people or destroying villages and corrupting people. Sometimes they are actually uh, attacked by humans. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a really great uh, great setting, great game. Um, since it it centers around like Nordic folklore and all that, how much did you? I mean, I this is this is was something that that I didn't know a whole lot about before the the Kickstarter. Um, I did have I did pick up the art art book though before because it just it, it just interests me. Um, but how much of this did you know going into this project and, and going into the writing? Like, do you, do you have a, a lot of background in in, in this like uh, uh, this subject matter and like the the folklore uh, and everything? No, 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 not before. But I read a lot during during the writing process. Okay. Uh, and one of the thing I, things I was uh, that really inspired me was how much these stories about this vase and are connected to the places where <laughs> different places in Sweden or if you would play it in in, in America I guess there are uh, certain vasen connected to certain places I mean it's it's obvious that uh, the vasen fr from before are a part of of how people lived and 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 the world they they lived in and how they tried to to understand it so uh, to me it was a way of also uh, reading about old stories from from the places where i come from and where oh, my nice. parents live and uh, of course there are stories of vase and from those places and and creating mysteries about that it's really it's really fun yeah, i bet i bet that's that's yeah. really great uh the the one thing we did an actual play of vase and uh, on on my show it's totally different from from the freely ch channel that that we're on right now um but the one thing that that, that i did when when i was uh, prepping for the for, for the actual play is that i kind of re had to research a little bit about i know it, co it takes place in the mythic north and it's not really like you know it's it's like an alternate uh, re reality or alternate timeline but what i wanted to do was i i wanted to you know make sure that that the town that i set this in made sense because I know I have a lot of international listeners and a lot of mm -hmm. viewers and, and I didn't want to use a town name that, that wouldn't have made sense like otherwise. So, so I, I had to search for like a little town that was like near a lake that, you know, was away from everything. And mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of fun. Actually, it kind of gave me a little bit of history on uh, yeah. Sweden, yeah. about Sweden, which is, you know, something that interests me. And, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Sorry. I, just, I don't know why I mentioned that. But, uh, <laughs> just, uh, uh, Leopold says, this Free League Showcase is really awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate everybody for tuning in uh, this weekend and letting us celebrate all the, the awesome work and, and uh, products that Free League puts out. Uh, let's, uh, we've got some cool questions here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Question. What uh, expect from the what expect from the Vasen vibe? I mean, the supernatural aspect, horror, investigate, etc., or a deep history about European folklore. Um, I think it's kind of a, a mixture of both, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, um, it's not supernatural in the sense that that the player characters are especially magic or have have, have like magic powers as such, but of course there are elements of that as well so this is a question that i knew that we we're going to get asked and i should have asked i should have uh, run it run it past you before we went live but any chance some supplements will come out for the undead book or the norse gods art book yeah i actually don't know uh, but i would guess that that uh, some of the people at the free league has thought about making something of the undead book but because that otherwise would be I, I wouldn't say stupid but it's such a cool book I, and sure? i think it would feel, fit well in, into the game the norse book i think that it's kind of different uh, it's such a different universe i mean uh, that could be a great rpg about playing norse gods sure. or something i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah but but that, i think that, that would be another game i think it might be a great question for Thomas or Thomas tomorrow uh, when we have him on uh, to uh, chat for, for for a little while. Um, 
very penny dreadful. Very, it is very penny <laughs> dreadful. Absolutely, yeah. yes, that's absolutely a great one show. of the shows I, I, I watched while writing. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> Do you have any other uh, any other uh, sources that you kind of drew inspiration I watched, from? Uh, the what is called the Grim Grim Brothers, the Grim Tales. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. And uh, then there are actually one one Swedish game from the eighties uh, RPG game that uh, <laughs> in the original pitch it was like it's going to be like shock. <laughs> that game. So I read a lot of those books, old oh. RPG books as well. Nice. Uh, Ibram asks, uh, when are we going to see more of the campaign that seems implied in the setting material? Conflict between various interpretations of the society seems like it will play a significant role. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. I have actually written a manuscript that is uh, a campaign uh, <laughs> that builds on the scenario from 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 the book, but I don't. It's absolutely not finished. It's just like a text from start to finish. Uh, I don't think it will be like the next thing that comes out. I think uh, Free League wants more more mysteries, more content and maybe even broaden the, the world uh, but sometime in the future I, I hope this campaign will come out i guess it will yeah uh huggin and munnin says uh hi guys how are you we're looking forward to this live thank you so much for tuning in <laughs> and being a part of this we really appreciate it I'm, I'm i'm really good i'm i'm excited to for this whole whole event and having you know awesome people like like nils on to uh, talk about uh all this, the, the work that they do, because it's, I, I said this, it's really easy to realize, to, to see a product on a shelf and go, wow, this is really cool. And then kind of take for granted the amount of work and all the passion that goes behind the, uh, behind the uh, end product and, and, and the, the, the process leading up to it. So I'm really glad that we can have uh, all these folks on to, to chat about it because you guys put a lot of, or all, all of the folks that definitely really put a lot of passion and, and uh, effort behind their your all your products. Um, let's see here. Millie asks, "I love the I love local fo folklore. Any plans to expand expand supplement books with other locations, France, England, etc." Um, <laughs> I, I I'm in a situation I don't really know how much I can say about. Okay, well, but I can say that those issues are discussed. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the one taking those decisions, but that is absolutely a question that is being discussed because uh, there are so many places you could place this game. Uh, I mean, you could play different parts of Europe. You could play, I mean, Northern America would be cool. Playing Alaska sure. would be cool. I mean, that playing Japan, cool. that, I don't think that will happen, but that would be cool as well with Japanese uh, base. And so I, I, I think, they will use that opportunity somehow, but I, I can't really go into what they have said to me because I don't know <laughs> what I'm <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We don't want to we don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but we, there are a lot of plans for this game. So That's I, great. I say. Well it's been it's been a huge uh, huge success and, and you know it, it it'll be one of my uh, top RPGs of the year. That's that's for sure. Um yeah, let's yeah. see here. Uh it would be great to expand the type of antagonists to undead and mythic tricksters, uh, other secret societies. Yeah, it's true. I agree. Uh, I think that interesting thing to do with undead would be, or a hard thing. Uh, I mean, in, in Vason, the Vason are not just black and white. They're not just evil. There are some Vason that are just, <laughs> just bad. <laughs> but I mean, the general feeling is that uh, the Vason sh should be kind of complex. Uh, that would be harder to to do with the undead, I think. But I, I, yeah, could be done. In a good way, I think. So you've worked on all of the RPGs that are based off of, uh, or been the writer for for most of your RPGs that have been based off of art books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a pretty cool uh, thing. That, yeah, <laughs> I'm just realizing this, yeah. like, because I mean, it's that's pretty cool to to be able to kind of put words and more like build more of a world around something that's just primarily visual yeah yeah that's that's a really cool like i i want to say power but it's not it's like a responsibility to have uh how much yeah. how much do you have to go back and forth with uh with the artists uh, when you're designing and, and writing these these rpgs um 
it's, it's has been a little different. I mean, uh, with Tales from the Loop, it was just me ma manically writing for <laughs> several months and just kind of pretend, presenting something. And then we worked with a kind of a not finished product. There was a product, and 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 Simon was having saying that that is good, that is not so so forth. In Vason, I would say it has been more of a group activity. I mean. Okay. Uh, Yuan has had a lot of ideas and input during the writing process, and we have rewritten parts a lot. So this has been kind of a long process to write this game. I, I saw that I had what I thought a finished manuscript in uh, beginning of 2018. Okay. Uh, and, and when I look at that manuscript, a lot of things has changed since then. So uh, so uh, he had a lot of great uh, input, Yuan. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think uh, it's a special thing to write to pictures. And, and yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think by chance, <laughs> I'm quite well suited to do it. I think, but for two reasons, and and one is that I'm not that visual. I, I can't really. I don't think in pictures. I can't see pictures when I when I read books. I don't know when I've written uh, read a book. I can't. I don't know how the person in it looks like. I don't make pictures. Okay. And I think if if you would work with pictures and it could be easy to be too bound by them that it's got to be exactly like in this picture and and and, and um, be too true to the to the illustrations kind of to me it's like okay i look at these pictures and i have to make my own world kind of with words uh, and to me I, that has been helpful uh, and then then i also think that my way of writing is is not uh having a lot and a lot of, of facts. Uh, I mean, there are great mm -hmm. things written to, for example, Call of Cthulhu, where they really use that. They, they make the world seem real by putting in a lot of facts from real life, real people and so forth. And uh, that could not be done with, with uh, for example, Tales from the Loop, because I, I can't say I, I can't decide that these mechanics works like this, because then would Simon would say, no, we don't know that. It doesn't mention in the book. So you had to make like a world from very little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to make like a, a skeleton of, of a world, more of a feeling. And that suited me well. And, and more or less the same with Vason. I, I, I couldn't just invent a lot of facts. <laughs> yeah. And, I I'm, I'm just like now it just kind of just came to me as we're sitting here. I'm like, wow, that is a really cool, like to be able to, I mean, I'm sure, you know, Simon and Johan, they, they, they have, uh, they have their own like world that they've kind of, you know, envisioned in their, in their heads and they've put it in the, into their art and everything, but like to be able to expand upon that and, and make something that people can play in is really kind of a special thing. And, and that's really kind of, it's really neat. Like I, I'm, don't know why it just kind of came to me as, as we were sitting here, but I'm like, wow, that's, that's a really cool responsibility. Yeah. And in, in Tales from Loop, it was it was a hard thing to just kind of figure out how to play in this world, as you say. Uh, the original idea from from Thomas was was to play kids solving mysteries. So when I got it on my table, that was done. But still, you, you had to think: are, are these things that the kids imagine? real in the game i mean you can right. play a game where, they, where it's just fantasies you go into these kids fantasies uh, or it's real or yeah there are so many questions on what level to, to play and to make it playable uh, yeah when you saw the uh, you've seen the uh, the tales from the loop series uh, that amazon put out i've seen some of it uh, seen some of it I I think it's really great, but it's so dark. <laughs> it is. Time. Yeah. I was like, oh, I have to pause now. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how. Uh, what what you got to get your thoughts on it? Like, as as someone that kind of helped shape that uh, that whole uh, that whole world, uh, what what you thought of it and how yeah. it was. Like you said, it, it is very dark, and it's kind of a little more dark than what you think the the RPG is. But uh, yeah. I was just kind of kind of curious as what you what you thought of it. I think for when when me and my group or groups play Tales from the Loop, it, it is uh, more often to the darker <laughs> side. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And not, I'm not, I'm not a, a nostalgic person myself. I don't play Tales from the Loop 
as a 80s nostalgia uh, kick. Okay. <laughs> to, this will sound really stupid, but wow, me, that, okay. that was something I, I didn't, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, it was surprising when people said, oh, it's nostalgic. And of course it is. I mean, his whole yeah. work is nostalgic, but that is not the thing I like about it. I like Simon's way of um, <laughs> describing or illustrating how it is to be a kid, all those, mm -hmm. all that hardship, all those struggles. Uh, um, I'm a psychologist, <laughs> I could say as well. Uh, that is my real work. And I, I think I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, colored by that when I uh, both when I play and when I write RPGs uh, so I only see kind of the relationships and the emotions I'm not that interested in robots or dinosaurs per se uh, I think I think the great thing he has done is is his first two books I mean it's one book about being a, a child that is so fantastic and one book about being a teenager uh, that really captures the essence of it Sorry, I'm not, I'm leaving no, no. in here now. That's great. I love uh, it. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, uh, I yeah. it's, that's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can get to some of these questions. Uh, even though I went all in on the Kickstarter, I'm kicking myself for not getting the limited edition core, core book. Can we order that in the future from Free League? I don't think so. I don't know what I think that that's... <laughs> I, I think that was just a Kickstarter only. Uh, they only printed. Uh, you might be able to get it maybe from like maybe at a convention or something. Once those maybe get back yeah. up and running, I don't know. Uh, the, the Free League uh, web store also might. You might see that pop up there yeah. if they have any left over. I don't know. It depends on. I, I know that was a very limited uh, limited thing. Yeah, yeah. People are very excited to hear lots of plans for Vason, which is great to see. Andy says. Uh, uh, just bought Vason this morning from my friendly local game store. Will Vason be included in the Free League workshop? I have ideas. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, it, has, it has not been asked, so thank you, Andy, for asking. Uh, you should really ask Thomas about it, but I <laughs> guess so. I hope so. I, my, my hope for Vason is that people start doing their own mysteries and start placing it in their part of the world. That would be awesome. So I, I hope so. Yeah, uh, with Tales from the Loop, there has been so many uh, written mysteries all over the internet, and I, I I love when I see that. Um, going to to Tales from the Loop and, and things, and you've also written for things for the for the from the flood. Um, which uh, which setting do you really kind of relate to a little bit more? Do you relate to uh, things from the flood, or I relate more to things from the flood. I was. Sure. Um, I was a teenager during the nineties, so so there is a lot okay. of all those teenage angst I uh, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and uh, as I said before, my my group has a tendency to go more dark, and sure. it's, it is a darker game. Uh, yeah. I think it works well with yeah with that. Nice, nice. Uh, let's go here. Did you intend Vasa Mysteries with a tight scenario structure or to be played as linear adventures or more like collaborative storytelling? Uh, I think I th one of my one of the things I want to do when I write uh, RPGs is is to um, show how to write mysteries or, or or scenarios. I think there there is a really as you as you said a really tight scenario structure. But I, I think in that structure, there is a lot of room to do different things, where to place the mystery, what places to have in the mystery, how to end it, how to start it. Um, I want to give that structure to, to help. So I don't think it need to be uh, either a, a structured linear scenario or a free, absolutely collaborative scenario. I think you can have both. In the structure, so uh, if I if if I should tell people how to play, which maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> I would play like these structured scenarios with, but with a lot of room for players to to bring ideas, to describe things, to come up with things, to do crazy stuff that isn't in the scenario. That that is how I want to <laughs> see it played. But of course, everyone should do as as they want. Sure, uh, absolutely. Uh, Ibram says the mystery creation tools in Vason are absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah, that 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 is the best uh, comment I've heard in a long time because that is the part that I'm most proud of, both in Basin and in, and in Tales from the Loop. I think that is, uh, yeah, what, one of the few things I've contributed with in my writing. So that that is uh, really nice to hear. Thanks. Nice. Um, so yeah, we, we've got a we've got a few more minutes before we wrap up. Uh, what else uh, can you and tell us a little bit about what what other projects you're working on uh, free league behind the scenes that uh, people might uh, be looking forward to seeing your name on uh, I'm writing some small stuff for Twilight 2000 uh, nice. small stuff <laughs> some parts for it uh, and uh, yeah I, I, I I've spoken to 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 the other the people in the free league about a, a, another bigger project but uh that is not something i can I sure sure can tell you about but there are other things coming well, nice well I'm, I'm excited to see that uh, you are excited to hear that you're working on twilight 2000 because i know that that was a, it's a huge success for kick for uh for freely gone kickstarter uh if i'm not mistaken that was their highest funded kickstarter yeah. to date i think if if uh, i did my math correctly um so it's nice to see uh someone that that has had such success with with these other uh, games for free league on that uh, on that line because I know that there's a there's a very rabid or a very not rabid but a very passionate uh, uh, group of mm -hmm. folks that, that really want to play that game and and uh, I'm sure you'll you'll just do a phenomenal phenomenal job on that as well. Yeah, yeah. I think Thomas. Um, he he has my picture of his is is really passionate about this game and i think he has to experience uh, both from rpgs and from life to 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 do it right so so i'm really looking forward to 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 twilight 2000 actually nice um yeah i think that's uh, that's all the questions that we have uh, is there anything would you like to uh, tell folks if they want to know more about you, where, where should they go? Should they go on, on social media? Are you uh, active on social media? Uh, not especially. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're too busy writing. <laughs> yeah, busy trying to get life together in some kind of way with everything. Sure. Yeah, but uh, I'm on Facebook, so okay. that's that's the only social media I have. <laughs> hey, that's 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 good. I just uh, just wanted to make sure that if folks wanted to. You know, actually, we actually have a podcast as well, but it's only in Swedish. Uh, Podcon, yeah. So any Swedish listeners can check it out, well, or or even just uh, American speaking folks. So that we can learn Swedish and and just so that we can subscribe and listen to it. Uh, <laughs> Struggle with it. That's right. To... You know, <laughs> yeah. it's all right. Then then they're not the only ones that are mispronouncing you know, all, all these words like I do on these on these streams. I, I tell you, it's uh, but uh, you're doing some some great work, and and I, I thank you so much for uh, for giving you time this afternoon. Or it's, it's evening for you there, and and uh, I know we all have families and we all have life, and and especially right now we've got a lot going on, and and I really appreciate you giving your time to to hop on and chat with us for a little while. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'll have to have you back on. Uh, uh, again, and uh, have a little, where we can have a little more time and, and uh, not be so, uh, you know, we were not marathoning content one after the other. So uh, yeah, I'd love to, ha love to have you on. Uh, I know that you did a panel for the UK Games Expo uh, that yeah. was that was really good with uh, Dave, and that was on that's on this this channel as well. So if you haven't watched that, go uh, scroll down, and, and uh, we uploaded that a couple a couple weeks ago, and that was a really great chat that you that you all had there uh, for for that event. So. Uh, Ibram says, "Bring back table talk." So, <laughs> all right, folks. I'm going to tell you if you uh, enjoyed this session, please hit that like button down below. Uh, also, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. We've got lots more content headed your way, and uh, we really want to grow this uh, this community here on on YouTube. And we've got more content headed up shortly. Uh, we've got uh, the Effect Podcast coming with uh, an alien scenario called Home Sweet Home. So be on the lookout for that. It will start in about 30 minutes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Be safe, be well. We'll see you in a little bit. Thanks, Nils. Thanks.